Hi, and welcome back to Dr. Donovan Medicine Made Easy. In today's video, we're going to be discussing a type of non-cancerous or benign brain tumor known as an acoustic neuroma, which is also known by its alternative name, a vestibular schwannoma. In this video, we're going to be covering several different key topics related to an acoustic neuroma. We'll start off by discussing broadly what it is, who it typically seems to affect, as well as symptoms, investigations, treatment, as well as prognosis. But before we get into the main bulk of this video, please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already for new weekly medical education videos. So let's start off the video by having a brief discussion about what an acoustic neuroma is. Well, essentially it's a benign brain tumor or a growth on the brain that usually grows slowly over many years and doesn't spread to other parts of the body. Acoustic neuromas grow on the nerve which is used for hearing and balance, and that can cause problems such as hearing loss as well as unsteadiness, two key symptoms which we'll discuss later in the symptoms section. Acoustic neuromas can sometimes be serious if they become very large, but thankfully most are picked up and treated before they reach this stage. In terms of who they can affect, well they can technically affect anyone at any age, but most typically acoustic neuromas affect people aged between 30 and 60 years of age. They usually have no obvious cause, however a small number of cases are thought to be due to the result of a genetic condition called neurofibromatosis type 2. So now that we know a little bit more about what an acoustic neuroma is and who it tends to affect, well let's discuss some potential symptoms of an acoustic neuroma. Well, an acoustic neuroma may not cause any obvious symptoms at first, and usually symptoms tend to develop gradually. That's because typically acoustic neuromas are slow-growing tumors. The key symptom to be aware of, however, is hearing loss that usually affects only one ear, known as unilateral hearing loss. People may also have tinnitus, which is a ringing sound inside the ear, as well as vertigo, which is the sensation that the room is moving or spinning. A large acoustic neuroma can also produce a variety of other symptoms, including worsening or severe headaches, as well as temporary blurred or double vision, numbness, pain or weakness in one side of the face, as well as problems with limb coordination, which is known as ataxia on one side of the body. Patients may also complain of a new hoarse voice or difficulty in swallowing. In terms of investigations, well if your GP or doctor thinks you might have an acoustic neuroma, then they'll refer you to hospital or clinic for further investigations. These investigations will typically include hearing tests as well as imaging of the brain. The exact choice or modality of brain imaging is going to depend on availability and what the clinicians who are assessing you think, but they can typically involve an MRI scan or magnetic resonance imaging scan of the brain, or alternatively a CT scan. The CT scan uses multiple x-rays to produce a detailed image of the inside of your head. Now on screen right now you're seeing a series of MRI scans which demonstrate acoustic neuromas and I've circled the acoustic neuroma in red. If you're a medic or health professional watching this video then classically you're going to be looking for an acoustic neuroma lesion occurring at the cerebellopontine angle. So now that we've covered symptoms as well as investigations, well, what are some potential treatment options? Well, there are several different treatment options that are available for acoustic neuromas, but these are going to depend on the size, position of tumor, as well as how fast it's growing and your general health. And in this video, we'll just briefly talk about a broad spectrum of treatment options, ranging from conservative through to more invasive. In terms of conservative management, well, monitoring the tumor is one potential choice. Small tumors often just need to be monitored with regular or serial MRI scans, and the treatment is generally only recommended if scans show that the tumor is getting bigger. If active treatment is needed, then typically the patient is going to need surgery to remove the tumor. Now, with any surgery, the surgeon aims to remove all of the tumor. However, sometimes some small or even large pieces of tumor can remain. If this is the case, then these will be treated with precise beams of radiation to stop them getting any bigger. Now, all of these options carry some risks. For example, surgery and radiosurgery can sometimes cause a facial numbness or the inability to move part of the face, which is known as facial paralysis. Management is also going to depend on lots of different factors, and so in this video, it's impossible to state the exact management for one particular individual, because this is going to depend on different factors such as other health issues, as well as things like personal preferences. 
So if you have an acoustic neuroma and you're watching this video wondering what treatment is necessary, it's always best to speak to your individual health provider or doctor who can make the safest decision in partnership with you, as well as discuss the relative benefits and risks. So let's finish off the video by talking about prognosis and general outlook. Well, large acoustic neuromas can be serious because they can sometimes cause a life-threatening buildup of fluid in the brain, which in medical terms is known as hydrocephalus. But thankfully, it's very rare for them to reach this stage. Most acoustic neuromas tend to grow very slowly or even not at all, and those that grow more quickly can be treated before they become too big. However, even with treatment, symptoms such as hearing loss and tinnitus, which was the ringing sound in the ear, can persist and affect the ability of individuals to work, communicate and drive. And these problems may need additional treatment. If you're interested in reading a little bit more about hearing loss or tinnitus, I've included links in the description box of this video, which you should check out in your own time. Finally, an acoustic neuroma can occasionally, unfortunately, return even after treatment. This is thought to happen in around one in every 20 people who've had surgical removal. For this reason, you may continue to have regular MRI scans after treatment to check if the tumour is growing again or coming back. So that brings us to the end of the video on acoustic neuromas. I hope you found it useful and informative, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up by liking the video, as well as leaving me a comment in the comments section. I do tend to reply to all comments, however, I receive many comments every day, so if it does take me a little while to respond to you, please bear with me. If you haven't done so already, please do remember to subscribe to the channel. It really helps us grow and it helps other people reach the educational videos that I produce. Once again, thanks for watching. Check out the other videos on the channel if you've got time. And until next time, bye.